Assalamualaikum. Uh, thank you again, uh, PSH, uh, Zishan, Dr. Faruqi, Dr. Arunavas, and rest of the team. It's my honor to represent both ACG and ASLT. It's rare to have both representation. I am honored also for ACG to support this important program and have a faculty. This is the second time last year, Dr. Paul Ko was the representation and this year. And I think I have to give credit to Dr. Arif Nawaz for uh, supporting and pushing ACG to support PSH. Uh, now, as an ASLD, as most of you have been aware about that the new nomenclature, uh, I'm also part of their uh, uh, chair of their, uh, the new task force called steatotic liver disease. And I will mention a little bit about what we are planning to do, but I have to say that when this no new nomenclature came in, when I reached out to Dr. Asad Chaudhary and the PSH leadership, and they endorsed this uh, nomenclature right away, and which was uh, very progressive. And I'm also honored, this is the, I think when we are part of the this chair committee, we are talking to a lot of international societies. And Pakistan, I think this is the first effort that we are bringing all different, very important societies, and it's such an honor to see all the amazing colleagues here from internal medicine, family practice, cardiology, endocrinology, and hypertension. So this is a step. So I will just briefly talk about what we have, why the process was changed, and how this nomenclature was actually changed, what process was taken by multiple different societies. Now, why renaming the nephilty was an important thing, and there were still a lot of key questions that we wanted to address. So the name nephilty was coined more than a couple of decades back from Mayo Clinic when they were seeing patients coming in from fat in the liver, and it was they were not drinking alcohol. So they didn't know what to name of it, and we didn't know what the pathophysiology was, and they named non-alcoholic. It was such a stigmatizing pattern that not only we are seeing alcohol in the pot, I still remember a lot of Pakistani and a lot of Muslim patients coming to us and telling them that you, despite the word non-alcohol, their family was worried about alcohol, and then you have fat in that component. So it was big, it's stigmatizing thing. So the first process was how we will find out that we can come up with a disease that can explain the disease better and also have a way that we can learn more about. So with this process, we can change according to that. So there are a few things that how this process by taken by three big societies in the world. So AASLD, which is an American Association of Liver Disease, then EASL, which is the European Association of Study of Liver Disease, and American uh, and the uh, you know Latin uh, Society of Liver Disease. And this is a very important Delphi process, which is a well-established process, which is informed by subject matters expert, and it's conducted through very rigorous methodology. And then there are a lot of voting system that was involved in it, and there are a lot of survey rounds, and it's acknowledged and have a very diverse opinion based on that. So how the process work is that, first of all, for this nomenclature, they identified 264 nominees from all different part of the world, and 56 countries were represented. I'm sad to see at that time, there were no one from Pakistan, but I did brought it up in our governing board meeting in ASLP, and we hope that any of the future thing will have a Pakistan representation and they are agreed to it that they understand how big was it. So, but there were 56 countries were represented in this all over the world. And then these are just the steering committee, but if you just look at the people who were part of the steering committee and from us, uh, FASIA was also a very important part of it, but they have more than 8,000 publication. They have more than 4,000 NAFLD publication with the median NAFLD publication of 89 when the participation and more than 100,000 citation. So these are the people who were the world expert in their field, how the process was started. Now, how the process worked, there were some online and in-person, and the majority was not. It's like a democratic process, 
And believe me, there are many people in the room were not wanted to change that because they think that it will gonna in have an hindrance to the science that we are doing with FDA regulation. But there were 35 questions with 100,000 comments and round two was 52 questions and 100 and uh, 1,366 uh, comments. And this rounds keep happening. There were in-person and virtual meetings over the last two years before this was finalized. And then just to give you an idea, I'm not gonna go into it, that how the Delphi rounds goes in from part one, the part two and three and four. Now, the acronym to replace, and I don't know why the slides are not showing completely here, uh, so if someone can fix that, that would be great. Uh, so the name that came out, there were a lot of names were discussed about, but it was agreed upon the MASLD, which is the Metabolic Dysfunction Associated Steatotic Liver Disease. I know it's a mouthful, it would, took us a little bit to change that, but that was the first thing. Now the other part of it, which we call, used to call NASH or steatohepatitis, which is inflammation with that. And it was a consensus that we should not change that. We should just change it to metabolic associated steatohepatitis. And the steatohepatitis definition will remain the same. There was no change on the fibrosis staging and how you made the diagnosis of steatohepatitis. It's the same how we make it. Because when we look at the new clinical trial, the definition they use for diagnosis of steatohepatitis and fibrosis will remain, this, uh, remain uh, the same because it will not hinder any biomarker development. This new classification will not hinder any FDA and FDA will also be changing this pretty soon. Now there is a group of many patients, especially in the US and rest of the world, we were seeing that they were drinking alcohol but also have this metabolic syndrome. And we were not labeling in any of the categories. And one of the big aspects of change is to have this MET-ALD, which is metabolic and alcoholic liver disease together. So this is a new aspect in the classification which was added, which is the MET-ALD. Now it's an affirmative effort, set of diagnostic criteria for MESLD. It was a near universal agreement on being inclusive. And it's minimized the patient heterogeneity and it's simple, readily available. And one aspect that we have many patient advocates and patient as part of this process also, not only the physician and expert. And the diagnostic criteria were aligned with the cardio metabolic risk factors. And we can change it in the future once we know more about it. So the term metabolic will gonna include many of the things. And the same criteria was given to our pediatric hepatologists and they have indoors and they have looked at it. So the, and even in the PEDS, which some changes also have the same criteria. Now, most of you are aware about the cardio metabolic criteria. It's very simple. And you need only one of the five with steatosis and you can label anyone as mesl D. So you don't need to have all these other things. And we try to make it simple algorithm. So overarching term is a steatotic liver disease. And then you have this muscle D, which is metabolic, and then MASH is still. Now there are patients, we also try to define how much alcohol is someone is drinking, and then you can label them with met ALT, whether they're more alcohol or they're less alcohol. Now there are some component with only alcohol, so there is already an entity called alcohol-related liver disease. Now we were seeing patients who were, does not have any metabolic syndrome risk factors, but they do have steatosis, and there was no terminology based on that. So there is a specific etiology of SLD, like some drug-induced amiodarone, tamoxifen can cause it. There are some rare causes that can be caused on it. And then we added another category that if you don't find anything, it's called cryptogenic SLD, which we're gonna learn more about it. Now there's a simple diagnostic tool. I'm not gonna go, it's on the, uh, you know, our ASLD website, and this will be available online. It will be published pretty soon that you can look at it, whether you have metabolic syndrome and easily classify patient, whether they have MESLD or not. Now, since that, we had this important publication, both by EASL and ASLD, and this has been taken. We have so many citations and how. Now the one thing is that it's been endorsed by more than 70 societies and the PSH logo is right in the bottom above the solda, so it's good to have. So on the ASLD website, we have a link that any organization who wants to endorse, there's a very simple process, uh, you know, the organization uh, 
can go in and put their logo in. And now the last I heard that this was the slide last week and we have 75. So pretty soon we are reaching out. We have this one of our task force goal is to reach out to many different societies, but all the major GI societies in America and Europe. And this will kind of change how also that all the major journals will kind of require in up to date, we already talked with the up to date, which many students read it, you'll see that new classification. So we are reaching out uh, to many different societies and this is a start which we are leading it. Now there's a lot of also overlap that, you know, how do we publish, you know, all the studies are already going on based on the prior criteria, right? Whether it will kind of impact any clinical trial or not or anything. But we don't believe that all the data will going to be because there is no significant overlap. The definition of NAFLD and MASLD encompasses majority of the thing. And there are now new studies already came out. So this month, this is a cohort they looked at from Asia. And they found out that, you know, there is a near complete overlap with NAFLD population. So we're not missing out anything if you use our criteria very simply. Now also, there's also, they look at the biomarker development and the data acquired from NAFLD are still val valid for MASLD. So there would not be too many change regarding that. So I think that is also the data will be coming out. Now there's also a component people were asking about that we did not include lean NAFLD, which is a part of it, which was seen in Asia. And then there was a study from India and the group from Asia, they looked at it. Then the real world cohort that, you know, 84 fulfilled the definition of MASLD. And then so there's another MAFLD classification, but it's actually uh, the MAFLD, our MASLD does cover the lean NAFLD. Now the bigger aspect is stigma with the patient, it varies from languages and cultures. And there are paper coming out that this term has less stigmatizing and patients are also endorsing that. Lastly, for effective implementation, we need unity, and this is what we are working with. So our task force are reaching out to many different national and international societies. We are talking to different providers, patients. We are working with pharmaceutical industry, uh, FDA, NIH, and they all are slowly and working on this implementation. And this awareness and implementation, and this program is part of the implementation and awareness program, and I'm glad all of you are aware uh, here and same with the global and partnership. So next steps that you will gonna see, we'll have more stakeholder meetings to determine implementation. Change is hard, but we have seen that it will gonna take some, uh, some time to uh, overcome and understand that this is a new definition and new nomenclature. And it is a, there will be a new living guidance document on ASLT, which we are working on. There will be a decision tree and infographics and a lot of PowerPoint like this will be available to all of you who wanted to give these presentations to your own colleagues. And then we are campaigning uh, increased awareness. And this will kind of provide us uh, to our, there will be a media for the, pub, uh, for the public because this will give us the opportunity to talk, to talk to the public and also make them understand about this disease even better. And so this will gonna also provide that opportunity with this new nomenclature. So anyone who is coming to AASLD, you will gonna see this, there will be a huge, there are many different sessions will be, there will be all these uh, uh, open uh, dialogue session. But also at the same time, we also understand this is not a perfect, uh, you know, definition or nomenclature and there will be changes will gonna come and the way we left it that once the new changes comes in we wanted to learn and get a feedback as most of you are aware I think Dr. Javed Farki may talk about uh, the PASL which in Asian Pacific Association liver disease have their own definition and they feel that their definition and we are working with them because it's in the end it's patient care it's the same disease how we work together to understand and do a better job thank you everyone